I'm back. Hi. It's been a while. Sorry about the image on Facebook. The program is trying to give me this like dreamy look. I didn't ask for it, but I just did an update and that's what I got. So I just wanted to, I heard something the other day and like most days it gets me thinking and um, just lately I have really not found the drive to be making social media content, which um, yeah, just is what it is. So, uh, but this in particular got me, uh, got a little fire in my belly. So I figured I would talk about it. And it was a story a friend of mine told me. And it involved a person that classified certain things as mean, certain things as I would never do that to my dog. At the same time, was doing things that cause discomfort and pain in their dog. And what's always interesting to me is the lack of connection between what I feel and what my dog perceives. And what I mean by this is, we're gonna talk a little bit about this like low level e-collar validation that humans use, um, but I'm just using low levels. I'm just using low levels. That's what I hear a lot. You know, it's not high levels, it's low levels. So it's not mean, it's low levels. I'll say it 46 times. And um, seriously, why did you go to the bathroom today? Why did you get up and decide to go to work today? Why did you decide to have your coffee? Why did you decide to drive to work instead of walk to work? There is nothing any animal does that isn't motivated by easing discomfort. The reason why you went to the bathroom is because it was uncomfortable. So you went. You felt hunger pain, so you made a choice. Relieving discomfort, I guess the word would be biological, don't quote me on that. But the, the, we don't do anything unless it's motivated by discomfort. You're standing in the sun, you move to the shade. You're standing in the shade, you move to the sun. So to think that low-level e-collar work is somehow different astonishes me. It literally astonishes me that people use a term like low level to validate causing discomfort in their dog. Because let's face it, if it wasn't uncomfortable, the dog wouldn't change. Who gives a shit if you're shocking me on my neck? If it's not uncomfortable, I'll continue to do what you don't want me to do. It's not discomfort. So we have to stop this nonsense that we think low level e-collar work is some, is some form of not being mean or it's not, it's, it's not uncomfortable for the dog. I'm not saying that I'm for or against it, right? This isn't about stop using e-collars. There's enough people out there that are, you know, side to side and want to create, you know, the divide in the industry. It's just nonsense. It's nonsense. I just did a whole Facebook live about, or uh, Instagram live about that. This is about understanding what's real. What's the truth? The truth is nothing's motivated without discomfort. Nothing. The reason why you went out to work is because you want to live in a house because it's better than living in the street in the cold in Buffalo. That's why you're trying to ease comfort. So I'm not saying it's not okay. If you're getting the results you get, great. But we can't say that something else is wrong because you do X, Y, Z with low-level e-collar work. I won't do that because it's mean. 
I won't do that. I would never do that. Okay. You don't have to do it, but we can't act as if you're high and mighty. You're different. You're still causing discomfort, which makes the dog make a choice. It's just like people that say no. It's just like positive reinforcement trainers who withhold food. That causes discomfort. So to make a change, we have to cause a consequence. And in nature, it's the environment. So the environment, the dog does something, the environment causes the consequence, the dog decides whether he wants to do it again or not. Yeah, I, th I thought it was a good for me. Chasing the rabbit and getting it and eating it, that was good for me, so I wanna do that again. I went to chase the rabbit, I ran across the street and I got hit by a car, nah, I might think twice, right? Consequence therapy. So again, this isn't about defending what you do. That's the problem. The problem is we get more education, we spend money at all these seminars, and then we get defensive when we really don't know if it's working or not. When we start to label, oh, well, it's not mean because it's low level. So is telling your dog no, and there's people that would say, I would never do that, but then they won't give their dog a treat when they don't do something. It's all discomfort. We have to like remove this haze. It, <laughs> like it's ridiculous. So that that's just the the long and the short of it again like if you want to use e-college great go use them right um i have opinions about that or actually i shouldn't say opinions i've had experiences that have shaped the way i feel about that tool in particular um same thing with leashes same thing with collars same thing with dog parks and dog beaches and affection and it's all from experience it's all from experience it's from being willing to think as an individual and not as a group. Well, I'm in the e-collar group, so I have to be defensive to anybody that tries to, to come in and ask a question. Well, you're one of those. You're a one of... Th no, I just have a question. And why are you getting so defensive? That's what I run into all the time. I asked a logical question. How come you're getting defensive? And that's what this situation happened. Somebody asked a question, the person got defensive instead of, in, in, instead of being able to stay open-minded and say, remember, this is for the dogs. It's not for me. It's not because I went to 10 seminars this year and I need an e-collar to work because if not, I just wasted $20,000. I just told all these clients that it, all these things and then it's not working. You know, okay. <laughs> so is it about you or is it about the dogs? Is it about your ego? Is it being a, a, not about picking up a phone and saying, hey, you know that thing I told you last year? That was wrong. I actually had one of this young trainer that I mentor who wanted to call all of their old clients and give their money back. That's how much responsibility he took. He took that much responsibility because he said, I moved too fast down the wrong path. That's responsibility. There's people that won't even admit that what they're doing isn't working, even though they're on my Instagram account, they're on my YouTube videos, they're sending me emails, they're trying to talk to my partner, Teresa, because I won't talk to them anymore because I know they just want to take my information and turn it into an Instagram live for themselves, not actually willing to do the work. That's what we're in right now. Everybody's a thought leader on Instagram. Everybody's a thought leader on Facebook. What happened to collective consciousness? What happened to collective curiosity? Hmm, that's interesting. Let me think about that seminar I just went to for a month, two months, three months, but no, we're already booking our next one with some magic tool or tip or tricks. So if we're really in it for the animals and the people that are helping them, we'll be able to say, I'm gonna take responsibility for what I put out information-wise. Because if it's wrong, it's always going to live. Because we're, we're in a social media world now. That information lives forever. Every video I put out for the last 12 years on YouTube is living forever. And one thing you will never see in any of those videos is a line drawn and saying everything on the other side is wrong. 
And that's why my videos, it doesn't matter if it was 10 years ago or 12 years ago or five years ago or the first day I made a video. It's just my journey. And do, have I experienced a lot and put the puzzle pieces together and said, yeah, I keep getting clients who have the same problem in their dog and their environment that they're creating is the same. The dog is similar. So how can I ignore that? How can I put them into a box and say that they need to learn a certain skill? How can I think that just a tool is the answer? We have to understand the whole piece, what the dog is, what the human is, what they've already done. All of that needs to be understood. And it's going to take us to be grown adults to take responsibility because we want to be the voice. We're the voice of the animals, but I feel like there's a lot of this and not a lot of this. What is the animal actually saying? And how do you know it's saying that? Have you done X, Y, Z and seen a different emotional outcome from the animal? Or do you just listen and then do the same thing we did last week with the same dog? And then when that dog doesn't do it, that dog's an asshole. That dog is stubborn. That dog is all this. Maybe the information could use a little fine tuning. So let's all get on the same page. Whether you're withholding treats, whether you're putting an e-collar on a dog, whether you're using a leash correction, whether you're telling your dog no, whatever you're doing, if, it's if you're trying to change behavior, you wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't some form of discomfort. But here's the caveat. It's from our perception of what's uncomfortable not the dogs. And that's what the problem was with that person. They were validating what they thought wasn't mean, not what the dog thinks isn't mean. There's an interesting study. It's on Wikipedia. It's around. They did a study with, um, I believe they were sport dogs, possibly um, military dogs. They used an e-collar, a prong collar, and the withhold of, withhold, withholding of reinforcement. Go Google that study and see which was more, which produced more stress in the animal. It will shock you because everybody will say, anybody you ask, unless they raise a military dog, <laughs> will say, oh, wait, my dog wouldn't care about that, but they would definitely care about that. So it's a small study. It's a little niche, a little piece, but it's what we don't think. And this is factual based on blood work, not our opinion. Go look at that study and see, was it the e-collar? Was it the pinch collar or not having the toy that made the animal have a higher stress level? We're all doing it if we have a, a behavior problem. So yours isn't better than mine. We're all causing some form of discomfort. If not, then why would the dog change? They say people need to hit rock bottom to change. Is that uncomfortable or is that winning the lottery? Oh, I won the lottery, so now I'm going to start being nice to my wife. I'm going to not do this. I'm going to start changing this. I'm going to exercise. No, it's hitting rock bottom. It's ha having somebody say something to you or an experience happen, and then you, whoa, okay, it's time to pull back. So, what up, Artem? Um, so, William's saying there's two ways to motivate. Add or take away. Yeah. But if you're adding something and you're not sure what the dog is thinking. So it's that nonsense people do where they give a dog a downstay and then they start giving them food. So you're telling me I'm adding something, but I'm not sure what the dog is thinking. Just because the dog is doing something physically doesn't mean it's not thinking something emotionally. So my dog could still want to kill a dog across the street, but it could also be laying down. And if I'm giving food, I'm telling my dog I care more about what you think because that's what they're paying attention to. They have no idea why they're laying down. Dogs lay down to rest. They don't lay down to avoid attacking a dog. That's not the way you control a predator. Predators don't lay down when they're getting ready to attack a giraffe. They run after them. It causes forward action. The reason why dogs stay is because they're apprehensive of something. And as what I've learned is there's a danger component to stay. Stay away from a car when you're a street dog because they hit you and they hurt. Stay away from strangers because I don't know if you're going to be a friend or foe. So yes, there is ways to add, but I've seen a lot of people who try to add like the Instagram live I did this morning where the woman walked by feeding their dog so that the dog wouldn't bark. 
the whole time the dog was in front and staring at me. So what was she adding to the equation? In her mind, I understand what she was thinking. But in the dog's mind, what was the dog thinking? You like when I'm in front of you and you like when I target dogs on the walk. So you're adding something there. But it's not what we think we're adding. And that's the problem. We expect the dog to understand what we want, but a dog can only think like a dog. It's a very important phrase I learned from a mentor. Very, very important phrase. It causes all of our problems. We think we're teaching something, but the dog can only think like a dog. And that's where the confusion happens. So I agree, you can add something to motivate, but you could also add something to motivate something that you already don't like. And that's where there's a gray area. And so, but again, it comes down to me. If you're getting results, great. Keep getting results. As long as it's not in detriment of the animal. If they're still using a prong collar and it's three years later, then it's not working. It's just the way nature is. You don't have to put your hand on the stove 20 times to realize you don't want to do that again. It's very simple. But you'll see dogs walking around for years and years because the message isn't clear. That's all. All right. So again, this isn't validation for your way. This isn't trying to create defensiveness. This is just trying to create thinking. I'm not saying you're wrong for doing what you're, what you're doing. What I'm asking you to step back and say, is it working? And if it is, then why are you here? Keep doing what you're doing. There's no need to tune into a Facebook Live with some random guy. There's no need. But if you're still curious, then we have to be able to say, I'm not 100% sure. It's so liberating to say, I don't know. That's the way the iPhone was created, right? That's the way... So many things in this world were created by saying somebody saying, I don't know. I don't know if I could put a motor on a bike and then have people pedal and, and have an electric bike. I don't know. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. But no, 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 that can't happen. It's death. When you already form a conclusion, it's death. Stay open-minded. Still think there's possibilities. It's so much more relaxing to think, I don't know, then I have to know. Then I have to know. Okay. Uh, yeah, somebody on Instagram said, all of our most influential life experiences that altered future behavior came from unpleasant experiences. Think about that. Somebody makes a, a comment when you're in sixth grade and a very vulnerable teenager about your shirt. Are you ever going to wear that shirt again if you're an insecure kid? Teacher, my wife who has in the last year has written five movies, five movies in, I think, third grade, a teacher found something that she was writing and scarred her for life because she got punished for it. So you have a person now who's 40 years old and is a screenwriter in L.A. writing feature movies, selling TV shows for 30 years, wouldn't write. Why? An unpleasant experience. It's interesting. Now, what to go back to what William said, if that teacher had to harness that mindset, could have been. At the right time, it could have been. So, that's it. Now, i got to go spend time with my Uncle Pete. He's uh, got some health things going on. So, today's movie day. Today it's time to appreciate and learn about family. That's what I'm doing today in him in Tahoe. But I just had that going on in my head, so I had to get it out. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please don't be defensive. I'm not telling you you're wrong. I don't want to tell you you're wrong because it's not for me to tell you whether you're right or wrong. It's about results. It's not about opinions. It's about searching for truth. The search for truth should start with no assumptions. The last dog trainer do you, that you met and had a conversation with, did they already have assumptions? Yes. That's our problem. We're defending our way instead of trying to better understand dogs. That's it. It's very simple. Start with no assumptions. None. 
none, none, none. We'll all be happier for it. And the dogs will. Okay. Bye, Instagram. Bye, Facebook. <laughs>